thrilled to get boomerangs. They were very good as ground attack aircraft and as army co-op aircraft. The CAC boomerang is Australia's only indigenous designed fighter. That's one of the key facts that always comes out, but actually behind that there's a fascinating angle. It was designed by a team at Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, CAC for short, but that team was led by a chap called Fred David, uh, who was actually an Austrian Jew. He'd come to Australia through uh, Japan from the Heinkel Works in Germany uh, in the 1930s. We are fully aware that this aircraft was only a makeshift to defend, say, um, some beaches and uh, other areas which are essential for landing to uh, prevent the uh, Japanese to come here and set foot on us. One of the key pilots that uh, flew the boomerang was Roy Goon, who was a Chinese-Australian uh, gentleman. Roy was one of the few people who actually managed to carry out an enemy aircraft interception with the boomerang. And unfortunately, for a number of reasons, he and his uh, other pilot in that interception at night didn't manage to close with and fire on the enemy aircraft. Had they shot down an enemy aircraft, the boomerang and Roy's story would probably be a lot better now than it, than it currently is. Yeah, well, the boomerangs did uh, mix it up a little bit with Japanese aircraft in New Guinea. Uh, I remember talking to Colin Munro, a 4 and 5 squadron boomerang pilot, a number of years ago, who unfortunately has also passed away now. But I do recall him mentioning that um, boomerangs re returned to a particular uh, site of interest up there during the war several days in a row. And after the third day, the Japanese were waiting for them to come back. So the boomerangs actually did mix it up with Zeros or Oscars at that time. And as far as he can recall, boomerangs did actually get, bring a couple of Japanese aircraft down, but they in turn were then shot down themselves. So um, no one returned from that particular mission to record a kill. So it's, it is quite possible that boomerangs did record some kills during the war, but not officially. A number of different aircraft have famous or infamous noises that uh, actually come from parts of the airframe. In the boomerang's case, the noise is created by the uh, gun ports. And unusually, the gun ports on the boomerang are above the front of the leading edge, so just slightly offset. And that acts very much like blowing across the top of a bottle. If you um, had used your guns, you know, and you did a fighter approach onto the strip and then pull out and you know, the lovely noise and down, yeah. After the war, of course, uh, boomerangs were not an aircraft we needed and most people wanted to move on. We, we'd had enough of fighting. The, the, uh, the young, then young men uh, wanted to move on with their lives. So boomerangs very quickly disappeared. A lot of them ended up in the jungle. Um, several of them, quite literally, were just bulldozed off the side of runways and jungle airstrips and the jungle, as you can imagine, just took over. A number of people um, recovered those aircraft through the, usually the 60s, really the 70s and 80s is when that was a major element. And now we probably wouldn't be recovering aircraft in the same way, but back then they were probably just going to be lost or turned into scrap metal. So those airframes were brought back um, and we're able to talk to one of the, the chaps who actually did that recovery. I grabbed my, grabbed my phone and uh, mates tie out a land cruiser and a boat trailer and half a dozen guys from here, New Guinea, we thought, oh yeah, this will be good. So eventually came out this place where, the, you know, where these boomerangs were, and it was semi-inverted without its wing outer panels on, uh, tail services were gone, and there was no, uh, they had had the engine mount and exhaust on, but the engine was gone. By the simple expedient of clearing a big enough area and getting the, uh, the right epoxy boat trailer we had in and in underneath it, and a simple hand winch and some grunting rolled the thing over so that it fell upright onto the trailer. That particular aircraft um, went through a number of different uh, owners and is now being restored up in Queensland by Matt Denning, one of the top restorers for Kermit Week's Fantasy of Flight in, in America. So the story is a truly international one and, and um, looks at a particular aspect of aviation that would otherwise perhaps have been forgotten. you want to come along to Aviation Cultures, we'd love to see you there. It's going to be worth your time.